In case you need to have a Linux computer, well, there's the virtual computing lab that's available through the campus. And I'd like to demonstrate to you how you can, make ac how you can access the virtual computing lab um, and get access to Tuffix just in case you don't have a computer at home or your laptop breaks or something else like that. So the first step is to sign into your portal. In my web browser, I've already signed in and I'm presented with what I typically see. Now your screen might look a little bit different, but the more important part is there ought to be a search box that'll be right over here. And here we want to type in virtual computing lab. And if you give it a second, it should come up with that option. So you select it and you're going to get presented with another login screen. And I'll make this a little larger so that you can see what's going on. You want, to, you want to use CSUF login, proceed to login, and since I've already logged in to my portal, it just passed me through without further um, confirmation of who I am. Now I want to make a reservation. In order to use the virtual computing lab, uh, you want to make reservations. Now if you know you need to use this in advance because of uh, your computer broken or you have a homework assignment due, please make the reservations in advance. That way you know you have these resources. If I click new, re uh, new reservation, um, you're presented with all these different choices. Now we're in the College of Engineering and Computer Science, so you want to focus on the choices that begin with ECS for Engineering and Computer Science. We're looking for uh, the Tuffix uh, 2020 image. And so here it is, ECS Ubuntu 2004 4x10 Tuffix 2020. Well, it's really not 2004, it's really Ubuntu 20.04, and the 4x10 means 4 processors, 10 gigabytes of RAM, so it's a really fast computer. When you select it, you can select now or you can select later. If you select now, and there's a lot of people trying to use um, this virtual computing lab, then your estimated load time might be quite high. So I'm lucky right now that there's nobody else needing this, and so I can make that reservation right now. And here I select how long I'd like to use this virtual computing lab. You can select any one of these, but remember, if you leave the computer idle, it might shut down. And you can use it for at most four hours. So I'm going to select one hour and create that reservation. Now, while this reservation is being created, um, I'm using a Macintosh. I need to get some software on my Mac. Now, if you're using a Windows computer, you don't need to take any additional steps. For Macintosh users only, you need to go to your App Store and so I've already opened up the App Store, and you need to look for Microsoft Remote Desktop. The important part is you want to use this one, not the other one. This is the Microsoft Remote Desktop application. It costs nothing. I've already downloaded it, and so I'm going to open it. And you need to open it before you use the Virtual Computing Lab. Make sure you open it, and you can verify it's open by seeing that the menu is right up there. Great, so I'm going to go back to my um, web browser, and I can see that uh, my reservation is all ready to go. There's this new button that was created after I requested that reservation. So if I click Connect, it's going to present me with a whole lot of information. Now, if, you're, if you know how to use SSH, you can totally go along with these instructions that I've highlighted here. But for students that want to have a remote desktop, then you want to look at the instructions right here. What I suggest doing is copying this and pasting it somewhere where you can get access to it. So I put this into my text editor, but you can use, put it, use it, you can put it into Notepad, Microsoft Word, whatever you want, so long as this information is available to you. So now that I close this, oh, I forgot one last thing. You want to get the RDP file. The RDP file makes connecting a lot easier. So you click Get RDP file, and it will download. It's a very small file, so it shouldn't take too long. And you can close this, and in my downloads folder, you'll see there's an RDP file. What I can do is I can click that, and it will open it into Microsoft Remote Desktop. You can see that I've, it's magically switched to that application there. It says, do you trust the certificate? Well, I know I'm connecting to Cal State Fullerton, so I can continue, because I can trust the certificates from Cal State Fullerton. So now it's connected to that remote desktop. Now, what's the password? Well, gosh. That's why I, I copied down that information. So I'm going to come out of full screen, and I'm going to go to my text editor here, and that's the password I need to use. Now you might say, well, just copy and paste it. 
Um, unfortunately, there is no easy way to copy and paste, so you're going to have to type this in manually. So, and don't worry, this password changes with every reservation. So that way, you have nothing to worry. Like this way, you need to, that's why I'm asking you to write it down. But you don't have to worry, I'm not sharing anything secret here. Password changes all the time. I click OK. And here I am presented with a remote desktop to a Tuffix, uh, 20, uh, Tuffix 2020 instance. This looks a little bit different than what you might see at the Linux Fest or what some of your friends might be using, but it's the same. Down here, there's a button for the text uh, for the terminal. If I click that, it opens up a terminal. It has the same commands that you'd expect with Tuffix. Here is the file browser. I can use this to navigate the files. And uh, let me move this out of the way. If you need a web browser, here it is. Did I click it? Let's try it again. Ah, there it is, Firefox. Yeah, the window's kind of cramped, but you can adjust this by going to the connection settings and adjusting this in Microsoft Remote Desktop. For me, this is good enough for now just to demonstrate to you how it works. So I'm going to clone a repository from GitHub. Type ls, and there's the repository I cloned. If I go in there, I see the whole project. I can type make, and you see that it built this program. And I can run it. It works. So it's got the compilers, it's got Git, it's got everything you need. Oh, and if you need Atom, you just type Atom right here, and it'll open up Atom for you. To save your work, you have to either use Git, or I suggest using the web browser to put your files into Dropbox or Google Drive. There is no way to drag and drop files between your, your home computer and the virtual computing lab. Remember, when this computer turns off, all your data is lost. So you need to make sure that your data is saved. So either use Git or use some online service like Dropbox or Google Drive to back up your files. And when you're done with it, all you need to do is just disconnect. So I can come up to connections. Oh, sorry. Well, I can't remember how to open it. <laughs> so there is a way to close it somehow. Well, I'll just try closing the window. And that should close the connection. Now, this connection is good so long as my reservation is good for it. Now, once my reservation is done, which is at 5.15 PM, that computer is gone forever. And all the data on is gone. So remember, back up your data. And there you have it. That's all you need to know for using the Virtual Computing Lab.